together. And that begins tonight. To fix all these places. The port. They both got a great yeah, They are focused on. Uh, I have the privilege of introducing uh, the first ever Vice President of WSU Health Sciences, who's also the Chancellor of Spokane. Uh, and I, I, really, I, I respect, but I also love Daryl. Uh, he's a man of character. Um, he, is, he sees his work both as a calling and a service. Uh, and sometimes when we see people in a regular uh, light around town, we don't necessarily know uh, their prestige or their capability. He could be off leading a university uh, as a provost or president to other places. He's chosen to be here. Uh, and so again, I respect him uh, for serving us and our community and WSU in that way. Uh, he has the uh, professional and research credentials and academic credentials um, to really to warrant those positions, and he's bringing those here. And he sees how WSU connects across the state, uh, how the resources that we're building here in Spokane are not just for Spokane, but for our entire region. And he's helping build the system approach. Um, and he tells some great stories, and he's a member here of Club 21. So please welcome one of our own, Chancellor Daryl DeWald. So I had to let them agree that I would walk around because I'm an educator as well as serving in those other roles. So it's great to be here. Thank you. Today is a little bit more about or less about information flow to you as if we really know all that stuff. It's really about a discussion. It's about interaction. It's about discussing some of the challenges that we have as a state, some of the things that Spokane is pushing into. So today I'd like to talk about service impact and partnerships. So if you think about, you are a lot of the reason that Washington State University has a campus here that we share with our partners in higher education. You went to the legislature, you said, we need something here because we need to advance our understanding of healthcare issues and then we need to push into solving problems around those healthcare issues. So. Um, I'm gonna talk with you a little bit about that. Today, what I'd like to cover is I'd like to tell you about our health sciences advances. I'd like to talk with you about some of the big challenges in healthcare. It says that it's about transforming rural health, but there are underserved populations everywhere in our nation. So I'd like to talk with you a bit about that. Then I'll get into some specifics about what we're doing as a university system and then I would ask for your partnership and help. So let me, let me start with the fact that thank you for helping to pay my salary. <laughs> so see, you're already into this. You, you're already committing to being a partner. And I wanna acknowledge that. I'm a public servant. Lars said it and it's true. I'm one of the rare individuals who gets to not only have their, be their profession be the service that they do, and then that merges into a calling. So it's a place that comes from heart and mind. I will also tell you that we love this place that you call Spokane. Lars said I'm the chancellor of Spokane. Oh, no way. <laughs> so I'm the chancellor over that campus that's over there that you helped to build. I've lived in nine states. I've lived overseas. I'm the son of a 25-year veteran and a serviceman who unfortunately was killed shortly after his service to the, to the military. I am the, the father of a former military officer also, so I have a heart here. I will also tell you I have children who spent seven years of their life raising service dogs, so I was always the backup for that. But we, we have a lot of connections here. I'd like to talk about those, but I do want to talk with you about WSU Health, and I'm gonna ask you some questions. So again, an educator, there's gotta be a pop quiz at the, at the start of this, so we'll see, we'll see how we do. And I've been told to stay away from that microphone, so I'm likely to walk, walk out here, so I don't mean to get behind you. But let's think about, we, we have this uh, concept, this organizing concept we call WSU Health. And sure enough, it involves our medical school, it involves our nursing school, and pharmacy. Hey man, great strides were 30 years old as a campus, okay? 130 years old as an, as an institution, so the university. So let me ask you the first one. How many counties do we have in the state of Washington? 
Thank you very much. Dr. Harper, so, all right. <laughs> Woo, look at that, delivering. Okay, so of those counties, if you look at how the federal government classifies them, how many of those counties don't have either medically underserved or medically underrepresented populations? In other words, they don't have enough medical professionals or they have underserved populations. So how many are in the good category where they actually are medically served and they don't have medically underserved? Of the 39 counties in this state, so good, I'm hearing zero, five, nine, five gets awful close, six. Only six of our counties in the entire state are actually classify, classified by our federal government as medically served and not having underrepresented populations. So this isn't just a rural issue, it is a statewide issue. Now, and, and sorry, you'll have to look at this and you're gonna learn right away that the genetics in my family actually are dominant from my spouse. So just you can, <laughs> you can imagine this and you can figure out who my spouse, that's not all my daughters there. So, um, but let me, let me also ask you a question. How many of you have in your families those who are dealing with substance use disorders? Okay, very heavy. How many of those of you are dealing with folks with serious psychological challenges? Okay, how many of you are concerned about the cost of health care? Okay, thank you. Now here's another one that we ought to be unanimous on. How many of you believe that we need to reimagine and redefine health care? Okay, I would ask you to be part of that solution. We have long-serving physicians who you love and know as a fellow Rotarian. We have others who have committed to solutions in the healthcare arena. You're gonna be part of that solution and your voice. So how are you part of that solution? When you talk to your legislators, when you go in groups and say, we need help, please engage with us and understand these problems are real and hold us accountable. So we'll talk about WSU Health, we'll talk about where we are as an institution. Here's a little bit more background, because often with these talks, they'll do the headshot of Daryl. You're looking at Daryl already, so you don't need another headshot of me. This is representing what I, I consider my best title. So I'm doctor, whatever. I'm chancellor, I'm vice president, I've been a dean, I've been a department head, but the title I like most is daddy. So you look at this family who also, love, thank you, Kyle, not Kevin, so, <laughs> woohoo! So um, this is actually uh, my nuclear family that I get to be part of, and uh, second from the right is my spouse. I was talking to someone here today, Rebecca, even while we lived on the Palouse, drove 140 miles a day to come up here and serve at Sacred Heart as a cardiology specialty nurse. And she will tell me, and she's accurate, where you invest in lives and help people, I save lives. And I would say, yes, that is correct. Then you'll look to the right, and that's our youngest, and she went to Whitworth, she loves Spokane, she will likely come back as a faculty member. She's moving to work on her PhD. You go um, in the middle, and yes, Thor is his name. He's a first year law student at Gonzaga, very tied to Spokane. Then Laura is a second year medical student who will do her clinical rotations in Spokane. So, and then that guy you can pass through, but there's a, there's a pattern of service here. Uh, the, the woman to my right is my daughter-in-law, Jenna, and she is an optometrist here in town. So you see this commitment to service that echoes what you do. And then Derek is an engineer, and yes, he was a military officer. It actually broke his heart to separate, but he made the right decision to go ahead and separate. A little bit more about my background. I have been in the pharmaceutical industry for several years. I am a researcher, I'm a biomedical researcher, most of my efforts, and I wanna be sensitive, 
that have been directed toward cancer research and breast cancer metastasis. So I had a raison de terre that was really serious because both of my sisters and my sister-in-law have suffered through and are dealing with breast cancer. So as a scientist, I have a commitment to trying to help in that way. Now, as an administrator, I try to mobilize the people who we work with to have that higher calling. A little bit of background. So most of you know this, and many have contributed to this. The campus that we reside on is 30 years old, and we have an amazing College of Medicine that is um, right now recruiting its fourth class. They're well into their fourth class of medical students and will graduate their first class in the spring of 2021. We have a nursing program that is 50 years old and will celebrate its 50th anniversary. Again, a Spokane activity as a consortium. The College of Nursing has a super building and a super program, but they moved up here fully less than 20 years ago. So you've contributed to that. Pharmacy is a college that is more than 100 years old in our system, and they have about 500 students in their program right now, and they are distributed across the state. So let's look at uh, kind of the makeup of our students. Uh, female students, 72% of our student population on our campus is females. Okay, first generation, and this is amazing. How many of you um, are first gen students? Me too, yeah. So, yeah, I would say college students, so, yeah, I know, but I have to be careful even asking the question. But then Washington residents, look at what you're doing. We're trying to educate so that they stay, so that they reinvest back into uh, the state and the people. We have a lot of faculty, we're recruiting, they're distributed across the state. Then you get a sense of uh, the student population, these are mostly professional students, some graduate students. We not only deliver an educational enterprise, but we're also very serious about the solution-oriented research that we do. And our research focuses on addictions, autism, cancer, chronic illness, community health, I'll come back to that, drug delivery, neurosciences, and many of you are familiar, the son of Spokane that was just recently uh, awarded uh, the Congressional Gold Medal. Did any of you get to see Steve Gleason as that process? There wasn't a dry eye in, in I was on the fourth row back and it was, it was just amazing. It really was. So we look at rare diseases and then you know we have a world-class sleep disorder and sleep research center. And there's a whole lot more. Now, when you get into kind of the quantification of all this, and this is what a lot of administrators get stuck on, not the impacts of actually helping people, but what you've done is invested in the organization that just a few years ago, our research was less than one-fourth of what it is right now. Eight years ago, it was a quarter of the size that it is right now. Now, what does that mean? Well, we're finding solutions for some real intractable problems or challenging problems, and it's about economic impact. So I don't know if you know, but what you have done has brought more than $100 million of infusion of funds to Spokane on a yearly basis. So this, right, this is up, and you see it's escalating very quickly. So it's not just about these health professions and the research, it's about the economic impact, it's about great jobs, it's about really having a kind of reimagined community. So I would say to you again, thank you. So this represents actually what we're trying to do, and I'm gonna let you look at this because this is our investment, and we do this in partnership, but this is about students, learners, that become leaders. So we are investing as a public institution in the leaders of the future. We're not just trying to educate health professionals. 
We're trying to teach them to be deep problem solvers so that in the future, they are trying to unravel all the challenges, sorry about that, the challenges associated with health care, and they are trying to bring to bear solutions. So this is our investment. And in turn, they drive us to do better and to be more accountable to society. Because I don't know if you've hung around many of these folks, but they are passionate about change in our society. So it's incumbent upon us to try to help them. I wanted to highlight a few of the research activities that have uh, been very public lately. And there have been studies that have come forth that show the benefits of, of outdoor activity. Now you would say, and I'm sorry, duh, but actually we needed to show this scientifically to get the support for it. Then we do have a center for rural opioid prevention, treatment, and recovery. Notice it's not just about research about misuse or substance use disorder for opioids. It's about interventions that will bring changes in behavior and they will help people to recover from some of these very challenging disorders. I want to talk about the pharmacy program that has looked at gout. Then I want, to, I want to just tell you a little bit about a community health program that we have. Again, I try to avoid the numbers thing. We currently have a program that is called iReach. And iReach is an institute for research and education advancing community health. It's a rural and an urban program. And currently the researcher is a physician researcher and she holds more than $50 million in grant money and talk about a person who is passionate about trying to solve problems that are community health related. And this is just one example of looking at Alzheimer's risk and protective behaviors and factors for urban native people. She has a focus on underserved populations. Her name is Deidre Buckwald. And Dr. Buckwald is a force of nature among some of the other researchers at um, WSU. And this is a time where I'll stop and say, Catherine Brazel, who represents UW very well, thank you, because um, collaborating together, Dr. Buckwald was at the University of Washington for many years and has decided to transition to work still with the University of Washington to be here now affiliated with Washington State University Spokane. It is truly a partnership. And that leads me to this. So how do we live into being a better institution of higher education? How do we do that? We're more accountable. We listen to our stakeholders. We adjust to what they're saying and we work with them. I don't know if um, what your image is of higher education, but here's what my image was for a long time. We all would form a circle. We would turn and look at each other in the middle and then we would gripe at each other or we would create problems. We think we need to form a circle, turn out, engage with our stakeholders, engage with communities, with individuals, and truly live out our land grant mission. And I'm gonna show you a map in just a second that is similar to what I was describing before. How many of you know what a land grant institution is? How many of you went to land grant institutions? Excellent, across the nation or here? I, I should ask this, and sorry, Catherine. How many of you actually went to Washington State University? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm sorry, that's a little gratuitous on our part, yeah, but thank you very much. So I am a product of land grant, and my father was in the military, but he did not have a college education, nor did my mom. So I went to another UW. I went to the University of Wyoming. Thank you. Great school. So it was almost an accident. But what happened is to go to the University of Wyoming, a land grant, and to actually learn that I could solve problems and that the starting material that was me could get better 
it was great. Then I went to Texas A&M. Did anybody go to Texas A&M by any chance? Oh, because we get to go Aggies, but whatever. So then I spent some time at a top five medical school, and so I've, I've been across our nation. But one of the things that I've learned is sometimes higher ed thinks they have all the solutions, and we don't. So part of why I'm here today is to talk with you about that, and I'm staying away from that. But partnering for health, and I'm going to get specific with some rural health issues in just a minute. But the way that we think about this, and sorry for, again, the gratuitous WSU flag that's up there, but how do we do a better job to be accountable? What we do is we work with people like Lars and his team at the U District. We work with Greater Spokane Incorporated. We interface with the foundations like HSSA, who have provided massive support for us, Empire Health, Avista, Inovia. We work with our collaborators in industry. We work with higher education partners, including Gonzaga, UW, Pacific Northwest University of Health Sciences, the community colleges, Whitworth, and EWU. And we develop projects and initiatives together, and we move them forward because we are responsible to you as taxpayers. We also work with the health providers. So I need for you to understand when I ask the questions about your concerns about health care, that isn't to point the finger at these great organizations. That's because we have to work better with Providence and Multicare and Chaz and others who are providing the health care. WSU will move more and more into health care in the future, but we are right now partnering with these great organizations. We also work with state government and the federal government and local government. So what we're trying to do is together to fulfill a collective vision. The collective vision of Spokane was to enhance the health sciences, health education, and health care delivery. But our collective vision is to improve and expand the basic and clinical research, health professional education, to expand our economic development footprint, and then to ultimately provide more health care. So I'm going to give you an example of what our responsibility looks like. This is literally a map showing the 39 counties and that WSU is responsible for activities in all 39 counties. So we have a responsibility through our county extension activities. We are planning on using cooperative extension and county extension to be a vehicle for improving health across the state. We call it health extension. So it fits with this WSU Health. If you think about the College of Medicine alone, the College of Medicine, of course, is housed at WSU Spokane, but our students in their third and fourth year, they go out by design to Tri-Cities and they emanate out to clinical sites from Tri-Cities, from Vancouver, and from Everett. So those students are in place, and they are learning in place with clinical partners. But not only that, but medicine has more than 110 clinical affiliation agreements. And if you drew lines for those clinical affiliation agreements with clinics and hospitals, it would look like a spider web. What does it represent? Our efforts to serve the state better. So one way that we can do that also is to not only go out with our students, but to provide health care at a distance. And Nancy, would you just stand up for a second, please? I'm going to embarrass her. Okay, so there we go. That was good. So I'll thank Nancy because her relational engagement with people who want to make a real difference. And that is, this is called the William A. Crescetto Mobile Health Care Unit. And Range Health that has been launched by Washington State University is about delivering health care out in rural areas. 
I'm going to stop and just remind you, if you don't already know, those who live in rural areas die younger, they deal with disease more, they deal with chronic issues more than those in an urban setting, even considering that in the urban setting there are, me there are medically underserved populations. The changes in our nation going from a rural nation to an urban nation are showing up especially in the health system. We have shortages of primary care providers and this is showing up in the health of those who live in these rural areas and in small communities. So this is one effort that we're making, but what we're trying to do with the providers, with our partners, is reimagine, is reimagine health care. How do we deliver health care at a distance? How many of you are familiar with what telehealth or telemedicine is? Okay, very good. So imagine that that becomes more and more effective, but imagine also that Spokane, to a large degree, the collective vision is the site from which it emanates. Okay, see the, the change you're making? Not only in the state of Washington, but let's go to Idaho and Montana. We wanna work with the VA, Providence, Multicare, CHAZ, to deliver the health at a distance. I'll leave you with this last thought. We believe especially for a lot of the chronic issues that folks are dealing with, that education will more and more become part of healthcare delivery. It will be that a provider, an excellent provider, is gonna have the time to do the intervention, but what they also need is they need a partner in higher education that will help them to deliver appropriate information. I know that you can go online and you can read a lot of stuff about your health and you can get a lot of different opinions, but we're trying to figure out how to do appropriate educational informational delivery and be a better partner stepping up into that responsibility to do what we're calling the WSU Health. We are going to have providers in our system but we're also looking at what we hope is a real change in healthcare delivery. I'll finish with this last slide, and it's a reminder that first I want to thank you. I really do consider your service activities, service, impact, and partnerships to be very meaningful. Thank you for allowing me to be a partner in the process. I love Spokane. I want to stay here. Lars said it. I've looked at other... Um, I've thought about other opportunities. This is where I want to stay. By the way, nine other states, this is the best place I've ever lived. I mean, this is, oh yeah, yeah. My family loves it. We want to stay here and we want to continue to invest in Spokane. So I do want to say we have some information if you'd like to look at it. In the back, we have some one-pagers that Jenna can, can point you at. But it's just a reminder, and I am going to charge you with this. The collective vision of trying to build over there from an old kind of, um, I, I will say, almost an environmental site to now make that, and this is what David Condon would tell you, and it's accurate, a billion-dollar investment already. That's because of the efforts that you've made. So I'll stop and, and entertain any questions, uh, but thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Dr. DeWald. Um, in the telemedicine delivery, um, what is being done then to, with the uh, infrastructure required for fiber and just to be able to do that? Because there's so many even doctor's offices in like Davenport that can't do any shared internet kind of uh, medical stuff because they don't have the, the bandwidth to handle that. So it may sound kind of, ho that's a great question, because it may sound kind of ho-hum that we, we ask our legislators to, to make sure 
that there's internet capability across the state, but it becomes actually a health issue. So there's a push that they would continue. If you talk to Andy Billig, if you talk to others, they will say this is a priority for us. But we have to work from the inside out too. So Providence and, and the VA, the VA is actually on our campus right now and I'm gonna scoot off to talk with some of them. They do telehealth pretty well, but what we haven't done educationally is fully embrace how do we educate our learners so they can do telehealth. You can imagine, just think about it, do they come into like a cockpit and they have 15 screens, they sit down and they have a joystick, but where, where that sounds a little silly, they, they will have to learn to interact with multiple team health care providers. That is something that we're trying to do at WSU is the interprofessional education piece and that is about developing teams of health care providers. Think about the complexity of that though at a distance where it may be a physician or um, a nurse pra practitioner that is delivering at a distance and they need those on the ground to help the patients. So it's a great question. Keep that voice because we need to have the broadband. We've, we've got to have it across the state. One last question. My, my question has to do with health policy. We have a lot of emphasis here in Spokane on training doctors and nurses and all of those things. Is there a branch of what's going on at WSU that is dealing with all these larger policy issues around funding structures and those kinds of things? Yeah, so we had a really effective health policy and administration team. We're going to retain some of those folks. We're, we're likely to transform them a little bit uh, more into uh, behavioral sciences and population health. But this is where we need to work with our other partner institutions. So this is where we have to work with uh, Eastern, Gonzaga, with UW because we can't do this all on our own. So there is an effort, it's, it's a high priority. We're still trying to get that figured out. Thank you for asking. Let's give Dr. DeWald a round of applause.